Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Alex Lapos of the House, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Today, we're going to be doing a very unusual type of Bible study, a little different than we usually do, and you'll find out as we go. So I'm going to ask Christina to open up in prayer. Christina? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for um, just another evening to gather in your word. And we thank you, Lord, for Pastor Alex, as you give him these Bible studies to continue to teach us the deeper things of your word and to help us to think, Lord. And so, Holy Spirit, we just ask you, Father, to impart to us all the things that you want us to learn tonight. Help us to remember it. Remove all distractions tonight and just take over this Bible study in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to start off by talking to you about a man by the name of Frank Abagnale. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but Frank Abagnale was the greatest con artist who ever lived. This guy pretended to be a Pan American airline pilot. He pretended to be a doctor. He pretended to be a lawyer. He actually passed the New Orleans bar exam without any training in law at all. He passed thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of phony checks. And, and he actually... Um, And he actually got himself a check machine, a, a, a real machine that prints checks from the bank, a certified check machine, until he was finally tracked down by the NBI, uh, the FBI and arrested. And after two years in prison, the FBI began to use him to track down people who were passing fake checks and frauds and stuff like that. And Frank Abbott Neal travels all over the world now lecturing on how to avoid being frauded. One of the things he says is that in order for you to be an expert in discerning a fraud, you have to know the real thing. And that's true about the Christian faith, too. In order for you to be able to discern falsehood, false prophets, false teachers, etc., you have to be familiar with the real thing. You have to know the word of God inside out. You have to know exactly what the gospel is. You have to know what the truths are. And uh, if you know them really well and you've taken them to heart, you should be able to spot a counterfeit quite easily. So that's what our Bible study is about today, spotting a counterfeit, but first of all, looking at what is true. Now, back in 325 AD, 325 AD, there were a lot of versions of the gospel floating around. There were false gospels, false prophets, false teachers, and there was also genuine teachers. Now, at that time, the Emperor Constantine had become the Emperor of Rome. He decided to get a bunch of bishops together, about 120 bishops in all bring them all together, and finally come up with a definitive statement of what the truth of the Christian faith was, because there was so much garbage going around, so many different versions of who Jesus was. He wanted to know what the truth was. So these guys got together, and they put together what's called the Nicene Creed. Now, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with the Nicene Creed, because they figure it's a Catholic document. It is not a Catholic document. This creed was formed together by bishops who lived 200 years before the Roman Catholic Church was even established. But we're going to look at the Nicene Creed today because to this day, the Nicene Creed is what binds all Christian churches together, whether they be Pentecostal, Baptist, Evangelical. They, we all believe the same truths. Even Catholics, Anglicans, and Orthodox believe this, even though their, their methods of salvation may differ from one church to another. So we're going to look at the Nicene Creed. We're going to look at the truth, what the truth is, and then we're going to look at one of the most dangerous cults I have ever seen, one that I hadn't heard of until Christina made it known to me last night, uh, no, two nights ago, sorry, and we're going to see how a cult presents itself and how a cult uses a lot of truth and just enough lies to seduce people into its movement and to uh, bring people into falsehood. So let us begin right away by going to the Bible study notes. Here we go. Here is the Nicene Creed. Please follow along as I read it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, co-substantial with the Father, which means equal. Through him all things were made, that is, through Jesus. For us, men and for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate or made a man of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sakes, he suffered under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the, again and the, and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified. That means he's equal to God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic apostolic church, not the Roman Catholic church. Catholic is a Greek word that means universal church. That is the body of Christ around the world. I believe in the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And that's the Nicene Creed. As I said before, this man here, the Emperor Constantine, was responsible for bringing a council of Christian leaders into Nicaea, a city, to determine what the truth of the Christian faith was. And ever since that time, this creed, the Nicene Creed, is the foundation of biblical Christian faith. Now, here's the Nicene Creed again, only this time I've provided a bunch of scripture references. Now, these guys didn't just throw together the Nicene Creed through speculation. They spent many, many days debating and going over scripture to come up with the statements that they came up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it. I have all kinds of scripture references after each segment, but I've also put down scriptures that I believe they used to come up with the conclusions that they did. So here's the Nicene Creed with scripture references. I believe in one God, that comes from Exodus 22 and 3, Mark 12, 29 to 31, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Genesis 1, Isaiah 44, 24, and of all things seen and unseen. So one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen. Here are the scripture references. Genesis 1, 1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1, 3, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Revelation 4, 11, worthy are you, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Colossians 1.16, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So there is a lot of backup to that statement here. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. They go on now to talk about Jesus. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, you'll see the references right after the bolden font. The only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father. In other words, being equal with God. So here are some of the scripture references that may have they may have referred to. Colossians 1.15, he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For by him, that is Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, that includes even Satan, the devil. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Also Hebrews chapter one, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having becoming so much better than angels, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So now the creed goes on to talk about what Jesus did, who for all of us our salvation came down from heaven and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again in accordance with the scripture. You'll see I provided all scripture references that they used and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God and he shall come again with the glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Now here are the scripture verses to back that up. Ephesians 1, beginning at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accept accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, and according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are on heaven and which are on earth in him. More backup for what we just read in 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 3. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, that would be Peter, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, and then all the apostles. And then last of all, Paul writes, he was seen also by me as one born out of due time. Then 1 Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live, and live to righteousness for by his wounds you are healed. John 5, beginning at verse 21. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. For the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son that all should honor the son just as they honor the father. And you'll see that these scriptures that I just read to you back up what was written in the creed jesus who for our salvation came down from heaven was crucified for us under pontius pilate was suffered and was buried and on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of god and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end okay the creed goes on now to talk about the holy spirit i believe in the holy spirit the lord and giver of life there's the scripture verses all to back it up. Who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. All the scriptures here to back it up. And I believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. See, the word universal is used here, not Catholic, because this was done way before the church became Roman Catholic Church. In those days, there was one Christian church and many localities. And I acknowledge the one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Here are the scripture verses to back that up. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he might abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Ephesians 4, beginning at verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And then we move on. 1 Thessalonians 4, beginning at verse 15. For this we say to, to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And when we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now that's a lot of information, a lot of information. But I wonder if you can tell me what the non-negotiable points or truths in the Christian faith are. What is non-negotiable? We've just read the entire Nicene Creed. We've looked at it. We've backed it up with scripture. We determined that this creed was written by bishops to offset some of the crazy teachings that were going around about Jesus at the time, 325 AD. So after hearing all of that, what, is, what are the important things about the Christian faith that we need to remember and hang on to so we can discern truth from a falsehood? Let's start with uh, Justin. Justin, what is one of the important truths that we read about? 
Um, can you bring some of them up? Just uh, just the first ones, actually, because I know you had the scripture references, but the the phrase in which are linked, like a lot of the. Uh, All right, I'll go back to the beginning. You mean the first, well, the very first one? Okay, here you go. Yeah, so for example, like that one in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, for example, like I think that one's pretty accurate as a, as a statement, you know, like, uh, I yeah. mean. It, well, I'll, all I'm asking, is, yeah, what I'm asking is what are the important truths of the Christian faith? That's all. So the one of the important uh, truths is that there's one God and he created everything. Correct. Okay, next. Oliver, what's the next truth that's important? I have it right Jesus, here. Jesus Christ was before all, and all things yeah. were created by him, for him, and through him, and by and because of him. Okay, so the second important truth is that Jesus Christ is God. He's one with the Father. He is equal to God. He is a, of the same essence of God, but he's not he's a different person from God because God is made up of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next, uh, Christina, what did Jesus do? He died for us, for all of us, for all of our salvation. And he came down from heaven to do that. He was crucified yeah. under Pontius Pilate. Yeah. He suffered. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he's going to come again in all of his glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. That's right. So that's a non-negotiable truth. There's just no negotiation on that. And here's something on the Holy Spirit. So, Brother Jeffrey, what does the uh, what does the creed say about the Holy Spirit? What does the scripture say about the Holy Spirit? Brother Jeffrey. It's gone over it. It's a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just look at the bold. Okay, it says um, the Holy Spirit, um, Lord, giver of life. Uh, yeah. Mind you that God blew his breath into man, into Adam, and man became a living soul. So That's God right. is a life-giving life spirit. Right. Anything else? Um, Father, Son, and I'm trying to put there. Yeah, it, um, Father, Son, it emphasizes the holy... Uh, Trinity. Right. Yeah. It says that the spirit is to be worshipped and adored as God along with the Father and the Son. Right. And what mm -hmm. about this one? What does this mean? Um, that there is one church uh, before the division of the church, the very first church of the apostles at the time of the um, um, Pentecost. It was but one church. That's right. There was only one church. There were no denominations. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about this one? Um, um, the uh, remissions of sins, um, baptism. Yeah. Does the, do they mean water baptism or spirit baptism? Um, I would say it means it is a spirit uh, baptism. That's right. Exactly. Spirit, what it yeah. spirit baptized in the spirit. And then yeah. finally, what's the last finally non-negotiation um, non is um, the resurrection of the dead that um, one day we, we that our life shall be caught up. Um, but, but first, those that have died, they will be raised. That's right. And okay. we will follow them. It's the, um, what, where am I looking for? It's the... Um, so, uh, I'm trying to remember the word. It's going to be a call up. Oh, the rapture. Uh, rapture, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so those are the non-negotiable points. Now, these points, this creed, makes up what is known as Orthodox Christianity, not Ether Eastern Orthodox or Greek Orthodox. It's not the same thing. Orthodox, in this sense, means the right doctrine, the true doctrine, the truth of the Bible. In other words, biblical Christian faith. And we've just gone over all the main points of biblical Christian faith. But is there anything missing from that creed that is important for us to know? Is there anything missing from the creed? Kofi. 
Did you find anything missing from that creed? Mm. That's a tough I, one. Um, yeah, I don't. I would have to study it a little bit further to pick out, you That's know, okay. anything that may be missing. Okay, let me open it up to everybody. Does anybody here notice that there's anything missing from that creed that's very important for us to know? Yes, I think so. Yeah, okay, John, what? Uh, we, I, we should mention that we are not appointed to wrath. The rest of the world will be will fall into wrath, but the rapture will, is, is going to snatch us out from before the wrath hits us. Okay, thank you. Tom, do you see anything else that might be missing from that creed? Uh, well, it doesn't say anything about us as sinners. Uh -huh. You're right. Okay, so I'm going to get to that now. Thank you. Both of you have good answers. Here's what's missing from the creed, and the reason that it's missing is because they were not dealing so much with how somebody gets saved and what happens to us after we're saved. They wanted to deal with all of the false teachings that were going around about Jesus, that he was not a man, that he was not God, that, he, uh, that, he, that we weren't saved by our sins, that he was not equal to the Father. That's what they were dealing with. That all came later. But here's what's missing from the creed, that the God that we worship is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Old Testament. That's nowhere in the creed. And that's extremely important because we're not just worshiping any God. Jesus is not the son of any God. He's the son of the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Old Testament. And that's what's missing. Another thing that's missing is how one is saved and applies the forgiveness of the cross. The creed says nothing about how somebody is saved. Finally, the nature of Jesus, that he was fully man and fully God. There's no mention of that whatsoever, of the nature of Jesus and also details of the coming kingdom. They don't talk about what the details of the coming kingdom are, who goes to the kingdom, who doesn't go to the kingdom, what the kingdom is like, when the kingdom will come, when Christians will be removed from the earth. None of that is mentioned in the creed. But years later, these details were ironed out and these truths became evident as the history of the church unfolded. Now, what are the important points of salvation? Tom, what are, what are the most important points of salvation that we need to know, Tom? Uh, that the, you, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit needs to regenerate us uh, before yeah. we can even look at Christ. Okay. Uh, what about, uh, let's see, Caroline can't answer any questions tonight. So, uh, Christina, what are some of the important points of salvation that you know? Um we're forgiven we're forgiven yeah uh, how are we forgiven by jesus christ's death on the cross and believing in him and believing that he rose again okay um all right we oliver we have eternal life yeah okay good oliver well, tell me something important about salvation we need to repent of our sins and trust in jesus christ as our Lord and Savior, and we need to be born again. Okay. We need to have a change of a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Okay. And Sister of Bev, can, can you tell me something important about salvation? Sister Bev? Forgiveness is, um, is where, where forgiveness is, is going to be is for us. And um, as long as we believe and trust, um, Whatever we had before, I believe before, I didn't believe before. Forgiveness okay. Is right there. So I have a question for you, Sister Bev. Is forgiveness for anyone who believes? Uh, anyone who believes. Ah, oh, gee, that's hard. <laughs> that's a no, no, it's not hard. Anyone who believes no, in Jesus, are they that, saying? Um, it, okay. Yeah, it's a yes and a no, because um, if you ask for forgiveness, you will get forgiveness. Yes. Will you get, will you get forgiveness if you really don't ask for forgiveness? Will you get forgiveness? And yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so everyone who asks forgiveness and calls on the name of the Lord, are they saved? Well, yes, I would uh, I would want to believe that. Well, you don't have to want to believe it. It is true. <laughs> so very good. Here are the important points of salvation. Let's go over them. All right, here are the important points, but I'm going to do it through scripture. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How are we justified? We're justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, 
who God sent forth as a payment for our sins by his blood. How do we apply the, the salvation? It's through faith and to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time, that is at the present time since Jesus died on the cross, that his righteousness, that he might be the just, but be just and the justifier of one who has faith in Jesus. So anyone who has faith in Jesus is forgiven by the blood of the Lord through faith. Acts 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. John 6, 37. All that the Father Jesus says has given me shall come to me. And he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So here are the five core doctrines of the Christian faith. And we get this from the scriptures. Number one, the Trinity. There is one God, yet God is three distinct persons, each of whom is fully God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Number two, Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man in one person. Number three, the atonement. Jesus bore the penalty of sin in his death and was a substitute sacrifice for all of us. That substitution atoned for all the humanity. In other words, what Jesus did on the cross applies to all human beings, anyone who believes. Resurrection. Jesus was crucified and died on the cross and rose from the dead three days later. And number five, we are saved by grace alone, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. So these are the five core doctrines of the Christian faith, which have been backed up for the last 2022 years and started with the Nicene Creed in 325 AD. Here are the basic Christian beliefs and what somebody needs to go through in order to be saved. We find out that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Through the word of God, we find out that Jesus has died for our sins to take away original sin. And by his grace, through repentance, as Oliver said, we become children of the living God. Faith in Jesus gives us forgiveness. Faith in Jesus gives us new birth. Faith in Jesus makes us a child of God. And we receive a new heart and we walk in holiness. Once we walk in holiness, we become part of the church. How do we become part of the church? Through baptism, water baptism, no spirit baptism. We participate in the Lord's Supper, and we also receive divine healing on occasion. We look forward to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when all men shall be raised, some shall be raised as Christians before the last judgment, and they will be brought into heaven and rewarded, and, and their works in Jesus will be evaluated. But the second judgment will be of those who do not know Jesus, and the verdict will be that anyone who rejects Jesus will be banished into a godless eternity in the lake of fire. So if anyone does not go through this process, if anyone does not believe this, exactly the way it is written, they cannot possibly go to heaven. Revelation 20, 11 says, I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades, or hell, were cast into the lake of fire. No more death, no more hell, or no more um, grave, rather. And this is the second death. And anyone who was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That is the eternal hell that we talk about as Christians. All heresies, all false doctrines. Let me just bring this up to the top. All heresies, all false teachers, all false prophets and cults deny one or more of these vital truths. That's how you can tell if an organization, a pastor, a movement, is real or not real. They deny one or more of these vital truths. And let me tell you something. They only need to deny one and the entire structure falls apart. Now the enemy creates movements with some truth, but enough of a lie to condemn those who follow. Usually the lies are promoted, promoted or propagated by a charismatic leader that has a hypnotic effect on the weak, gullible, desperate people of his following. And having said that, I just want to talk to you about cults in general. Cults in general take the truths that we've just gone through and they twist them or they ignore them or they add to them. 
Mormonism adds to the truth. Jehovah Witnesses takes away from the truth. But we're going to look at a cult today that Christina made me aware of just two days ago called the Shinjongi cult. The Shinjongi Church of Jesus, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, commonly known as Shinjongi Church of Jesus, or simply Shinjongi, is the church of the new heaven and the new earth, and is a denomination of the Christian new religious movement established in North Korea by a man named Lee Man Hee, and is considered a pseudo-religion or cult by mainstream churches. Now here's a little bit on Shinjongi. Shinjongi's teachings claim that their founder, Lee, is the pastor promised in the New Testament, and that the book of Revelation is written in secret metaphors and parables, which only Lee is capable of deciphering. Now there's a problem right there. Before founding his own religious movement, Lee was a member of a controversial group called the Olive Tree Church, a new religious movement which spawned the first counter-cult movement in post-war Korea, although the, this connection is not present in Shin John Ji's biography of Lee. Now, you would never find out that this was a cult until you're deeply connected with it. So in other words, if you were examining it at first and you were looking at its teachings at first, you may not be able to spot its true, its falsehoods, because as I said before, every cult, every cult uses a little bit of truth, but just enough of a lie to condemn those who follow it. So here's what we're going to do in the rest of the Bible study. We're actually going to go to the website of this movement. Here we go. Here's the website of the movement, the Church of the New Heavens and the New Earth. And we're going to look at their statement of faith one by one. And I'm going to ask you, do you find any problem with some of the things that are written in the statement of faith? So let's start with the statement that they make about God. Now, we just read the Nicene Creed. We read all the truths of the Christian faith. We looked at all the truths of Christianity. And if we know them to heart, we should be able to pick up any error that is in the Shinjongi movement. So let's start with their statement about God. We believe that God is the one and only self self-existing living spirit in god god is the creator of the heavens and earth and the origin of life although the fullness of god left his creation and subjected it to the full futility of death because of sin he promised to recreate his kingdom on earth and dwell with his people forever in perfect paradise kofi do you see any problem with that statement now remember a lot of it is true but there's at, you'll find at least one falsehood in there. Can you find the falsehood in that statement if there is one? Kofi. Um. Very subtle. Now, my point is, is that cults are very subtle and you never find out who they really are until you're deep into it. So we're looking at their statement of faith for the subtleties that just drift you away, steer you away a little bit from the truth of the gospel. Now, do you see anything in this statement that would steer you away from the truth of the Bible? Um, so, okay, I, I will discuss maybe one or two things. Okay, go ahead. Um, so the second, the, the third sentence, although the fullness of God left his creation, yeah. Um, it, it, it's the way it's written um, doesn't really indicate that man sinned and so God was the one that um, you know uh, uh, brought judgment okay, uh, so on that, man <clears throat> alright yeah yeah so instead of talking about sin it talks about the fullness of God leaving his creation yeah. because of sin um, because of sin, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't talk. It doesn't say that sin is the problem. It says that God removing His fullness is the problem. Now, well, one of the it, it didn't even say that God removed His fullness. It, it says the fullness left. Left so, His creation. Yeah, left His creation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now the problem. Uh, that, thank you, Kofi. The problem that I see is this one. We believe that God is the one, only, self-sufficient, existing, living Spirit. John Carlos, do you see a problem with that statement? There's a big yes, problem. Yes, there's no mention of a, a trinity. That's correct. God is threefold. He's not just one. That's exactly right. There's no mention of the trinity, and this presents God as a monad. So right away, 
we have some truth, but we have two glaring errors in their statement about God. Let's see what they see about Jesus. We believe Jesus is the Son of God through whom we know God. Jesus was born according to prophecy. He worked and spoke on behalf of God, died for the sins of humanity, resurrected on the third day, all according to prophecy. Jesus is both one with the Father and sitting at the right hand of God eternally in authority over all creation. We believe that it is only through Jesus that we can have salvation and eternal life. Now, there is some truth in this, but there is some error. Justin, can you find an error in this statement about Jesus? It's very subtle. That's why these cults draw so many people in. They sound like the truth, but if you dig deep and you know the truth, you'll see the error. You see anything wrong with that statement, Justin? Yeah, I'm still looking. Uh... That's all right. It's very subtle, very subtle. That and it's that's what that's what's so ter so evil about it is that it's so subtle. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. Here's the problem right here. Why is that a problem? Jesus is both one with the Father. Yes. Him and the Father are one. That's fine. I don't see any issue there. And he's sitting at the right hand of God eternally in authority over all creation. Uh, well, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father that we know from Scripture yeah. in authority over all creation. So... I don't know. It's a tough uh, one. Eh? All right. That's okay. That's all right. Let's see. John Cardos, do you see a problem with this statement? Yes, he's equal with the father. Yeah, exactly. He could be. It's this statement says he's one with the father. Anybody can be one with the father. We're one with the father when we get saved. So it says that Jesus is one with the father and sits eternally over authority over all creation. But it never specifically states in clear terms that Jesus is God. That he's equal with the Father. Again, a denial of the Trinity. All right, let's see what this has to say about the Holy Spirit. Whoa, there are a lot of things about the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us there are, okay. The Bible tells us there are two kinds of spirits. Holy and evil. Interesting. Holy spirits belong to God. Evil spirits belong to God's enemy, the devil. Humans have spirits as well. And God wants our spirit to resemble his own body and living spirit. Although God originally made the spirit of man in his own image, we were deceived by God's enemy and we sinned, corrupting our spirits. The wages of sin is death, but through the redeeming sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, our debt of sin can be paid. And by being born again of the imperishable seed of God's word, our spirit can be restored to God and life. In addition, God sent the Holy Spirit into the hearts of his people on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit united with his newly living spirit with the newly living spirits of the disciples and gave them the power they needed to testify to the gospel to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit works within the hearts of believers to teach, convict, sanctify, comfort, strengthen, and encourage. It also gives us the power to speak God's word on God's behalf. But the Holy Spirit that came at Pentecost was only a down payment of what God had promised. The fullness of God's Holy Spirit will come upon us when we are fully changed, when the kingdom comes, and when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Christina, do you see any problem with this long statement? Oh, it's a lot, but that last part just did not sit well in my spirit. Okay, so tell me why it doesn't sit well in your spirit. Let's read that again. The fullness of God's Holy Spirit will come upon us when we are fully changed. Yes. No, we we receive Holy Spirit when we believe <laughs> in Jesus and receive him and get saved. Okay. And there's a process of sanctification that happens, not when we're fully, what is fully changed? Okay. It doesn't, That's that right. doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. No, the spirit does not come upon us when we're fully changed. And the question is, how do we, how do we become fully changed? I'll tell you how, by joining this cult and following its teachings. That's how you become <laughs> fully changed. <laughs> And then when you're fully changed, then you'll receive the fullness of the spirit. But guess what? You don't receive the fullness of the spirit after you're fully changed. No, you have to wait till when to receive the fullness of the spirit. 
Christina, when do you have to wait to get the fullness of the Spirit? When the kingdom comes and when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, I, I see. I, so I, I, I. Is that a problem? Yeah. Why? Because I said so. No. Um. Okay, fine. She's in the <laughs> Okay, we got a problem, folks. Uh, when the kingdom comes and when it's... Uh, when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's like saying there can't be any sickness on the earth. There's got to be complete healing and there's got to be basically no sin on the earth. And then and that's when we're fully changed, like trying to bring heaven to earth. Or something. Correct. We don't get saved until the kingdom comes and Jesus returns. That's exactly what they teach. Tom, do you see any other problems in this state, in these long statement? You can take a look uh, at it. Yeah, the beginning, Holy Spirits belong to God. Yeah, okay. What do you see in that? I see more than one Holy Spirit. Exactly. You see one more. There's only one Holy Spirit, and exactly. that's the third person of the Godhead. What about this? This statement. You believe that? Yeah, it's demons. But do they belong to Satan? Do or are belong? they creatures or are they fallen creatures of God? They're fallen creatures of God. Exactly. So they don't belong to, to Satan. Satan has no power. This gives more power to the devil than he's actually deserved. That's true. Okay. All right, then. Jeffrey, do you see any problems with this long statement? Um, see. See, there's, there's some truth in here. For example, here, the wages of sin is death, but through the redeeming sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, our death can be paid. That's true. Being born again. Ah, here's a problem. Yes, you see a problem yeah. here? You see a problem being, here? Yes. Um, being born again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Being born again by the imperishable seed of God's word. It is, in a sense, true. The problem with this um, particular philosophy, it's very close to what is actually true. Yes. So it's difficult to decipher. Exactly. They, what is wrong from what is right with this um, test, testament here. Right. But we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith that's, in God. That's right. We're saved by the blood of Jesus, not by the word of God. The word of God is yeah. not elevated above Jesus. The word of God points us to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And let me take one more thing. Let me take this one. Whoops. Justin, do you see a problem with this one? All right, so the, this Holy Spirit united with the newly living spirits of the, of the disciples uh -huh. and gave them the power they needed to testify the gospel to the end. But yeah, that first sentence, the Holy Spirit united with the newly living spirits of the disciples. That's a that's the problem. Can you tell me why? Well, once you once you you're born again, you receive the the Holy Spirit. So it's it, not the Holy Spirit doesn't unite afterwards. It's just, that's it's, exactly right. The Holy Spirit was given to them in Luke twenty four, or I'm sorry, in John twenty. The Holy Spirit was given to the disciples. The Holy Spirit did not unite with the recreated spirits of the disciples. That's a heresy. The Holy Spirit was given to them ahead of time. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit empowered them to preach the gospel all over the world. So we, right. see, we see here the subtleties, the subtleties of this cult. But now we're going to go to their homepage. And in their homepage, where it says who we are, we really see the veil taken away like you wouldn't believe. Here's what they say about the city of truth. Listen to this. The Bible promises God's people will be gathered together as a city of truth in the last days and united in their understanding of God's word of truth. The members of Shinjanji work hard to write God's word in their hearts and minds, grow a life-changing faith, and put that faith into action by sharing God's word 
with those around them in our hope for heaven and eternal life, we strive to be the light of God in the world. Kofi, do you see a problem with that statement? This is where the, the veil is taken off and we find out what these people are really about. What's the problem with that statement, Kofi? Um... Well, it's it's based on 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 effort. That's exactly. It's this is a religion of works, and not yeah. only works, but specific kinds of works, the works that are given to you by the Shinjanji cult. If yeah. you don't do the works that they give you, you'll never grow into a changing faith that will give you a hope of heaven and earth. Let's look at their statement on righteousness and judgment. This one's a little longer. God has been working in every generation to create his kingdom and priests who represent him properly and help him heal the world. In addition to speaking the truth, the people and the priests of God must seek that God's kingdom and his righteousness. Righteousness is the right path from which we must not turn. Can those who lack the word of truth walk in righteousness from God's perspective? Since we are judged according to the standard of God's word rather than our own thoughts, the people of Shinjanji strive to align our thoughts and actions with the Bible and help others to do the same. Gerhardt, do you see a problem in that statement? Are you there? Yeah, just reading through it again. Yeah, okay, sure. Take your time. I can help you out if you want. I mean, other than the fact that he specifies his kingdom and priests. Uh -huh. Here, let me, um, let, me, let me highlight the problem. Read that, what, just read that statement and you'll find the problem. Well, I mean, how are we supposed to walk in truth if you know we are i don't know isn't that like part of being saved is moving from one state to the other yeah but this is uh this doesn't say that though it says the people yeah priest, it doesn't say that it kind of implies that you what, already need to be saved to be saved well what's the right path what do they mean by the right path i would assume that's everything in scripture no they mean their cult that's the right path. yeah that's the, that's the problem. Somebody would read that and say, oh, yeah, they're talking about the Bible. No, they're not <coughs> talking about the Bible. They're talking about the Shinjanji teaching. That's the right path. And if you don't follow their teaching, you can never make it into heaven. Let's see what it says about kings. But, uh, Pastor, I'm sorry. At the, yeah. at the beginning of this passage, actually, the one you have, righteousness and justice, this is something crazy because it says the priest who represent him properly yeah and help him heal the world. So in uh, other words, if you don't follow this kind of priest, you're going nowhere because yeah, exactly. they are the only one who could help you. Precisely, because they're the only ones that can help you represent him properly. You're, yeah, yes. good, you guys are getting the idea. Very good. Now, if you, can, if you can discern, if you can see the untruths, the lies in this cult, you can see the lies in any cult. And finally, virtuous kings. This is a good one. In the last days, when God's kingdom is completed on earth as it is in heaven, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God, is once more amongst men. Oh, really? The Bible promises that all nations will come and worship. If God's kingdom is to rule the world, then the leaders of that kingdom must act as holy and virtuous kings. This is why 1 Peter 2, 9-12 to speaks of a holy priesthood, a holy people of God, who will reveal the truth of God to the world. They must be transformed such as their behavior becomes truly excellent so that even non-believers will come to glorify God. This is how the 12 tribes of God's kingdom will accomplish the healing of the nations. Christina, do you see a problem in that? Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to reread this. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of problems. Like There's a lot of problems in this one. Yeah, let, me, let me help you out. Let's start with this. Let's start with men. this. What? Once yeah. more among men. Uh, let's start with this statement. In the last days when God's kingdom is completed on earth as it is in heaven, the tabernacle dwelling place of God is once more amongst men. What is the, okay, what are in the last days, God's um, kingdom is not completed on earth. 
It's going to be a mess on Earth. <laughs> Uh, um, and God is once more among men. Yeah, that means living in men, the Holy Spirit living in men, being the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what they're saying is, is that you cannot, no one can be saved until the kingdom comes. They're just repeating what they said before we read. But the subtlety in this is that the kingdom will only come in the last days when everything is complete. Only then will God live amongst men. Any, you see any other problems? How about, how about this one? This is why First Peter speaks of a royal priesthood and holy people of God who will reveal the truth of God to the world. What, uh, oh, okay. It's like a select few. That's right. And who are the select few that are going to teach the people the, the <laughs> truths of God? The people of this cult. That's right. And this people of this cult are what else? This is a real lie here. This is how the, this is how we do it. This is how the 12 tribes of God's kingdom accomplish the healing of the nations. It's all that? about the healing. It's a repetition of the healing, the healing. Yeah. Healing the world. and. But there's a real problem when they say the 12 tribes of God's kingdom. What, what, is, what, is, what, are, they, what are they trying to say? Well, the person themselves was the chosen one. Yeah, what they're saying is, is that only people of this cult are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. And that only through this cult will you be in uh, uh, brought into heaven because you will be part of the 12 tribes. That's an absolute, total lie. Well, Koreans are not part of Israel tribes. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> but anyway, what they're saying is, is that this guy, Lee, uh, the, the leader of this cult, says that God is going to restore the 12 tribes of Israel through his cult, through his teaching. You become part of his teaching, you'll be installed into one of the 12 tribes, and only those 12 tribes will be saved when the kingdom comes, and only those 12 tribes have the truth to bring people into the kingdom of God. That's Don't the his... Mormons say something like that? Yeah, yeah, every cult says that. <laughs> That's my whole point. Every cult says they're the only church. They're the only way. Everybody else is false. Now, we say that true. We say that too, that we're the only way. But we say it because Jesus said it. So that's it. And that's uh, my exercise in discerning a cult. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little different than our usual Bible study. Excuse me, but it, Pastor Alex. That, yeah. cult, that cult has been trying to, I think, convert me the last oh, the, couple of days. Oh, can you, get them, they, can, they, can, they can infect you off of Facebook. Yeah, they're all over the place. They're all over. Oh, the, yeah. They're all over the place. In fact, yeah. somebody that Christina knows is part of that cult. Yeah. That's how this whole thing came up. I blocked them all. I blocked them all by the grace of God. Christina, if Christina's brave, she can send this Bible study to Maria. But anyway, let's pray for Maria before we go. Christina, yeah. would you pray for her? And let's pray her out of that cult in Jesus name. And then I'll have Kofi close in prayer. Christina. Father God, Lord, we just want to lift up um, my acquaintance, Maria, to you, Father God, and we just thank you, Lord, that you have revealed um, this church that she is a part of, Father God, and we just ask you, um, Lord, to take her out, Father God, and I pray that you would just use me to shed light in our conversation um, tonight, Father God, because I already see a message from her waiting in my inbox, so I just pray that you would use me to share your truth and word. And I pray you open up her spirit to receive it, Father God, and that you would save her soul from these lies, Father, and everyone else that might be sucked into this cult and anyone else in any other cult, Father God. We just ask you, Lord, to illuminate their spirit, Father God, by your power, Holy Spirit, and bring them into your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remember what Frank Abagnale said that I told you about in the beginning. In order for you to be able to discern the falsehoods, You've got to know the truth inside out. You've got to know the real thing inside out before you know the counterfeit. And I hope this Bible study has established that fact. Kofi, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for your goodness and your love and your mercy towards us, oh God. Lord, we ask, oh Father, that you will hold the truths, the precepts that you have laid before us in your scripture you will hold them um, um, close to us oh god and that you will protect us from uh, the deception of the age 
um, a deception that comes from uh, uh, the culture, a deception that comes from false religions and, 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 and cults of God, deceptions uh, that even come from those that are around us uh, because um, we are all susceptible to uh, uh, lies and, and deception. And uh, unless we walk closely with you and have a close relationship with you and have a deep understanding of the scripture, uh, even the elect can be deceived, oh God. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that you will guard our hearts from deception, guard our minds and our spirits, oh God, from the contamination of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that we will continue to hold steadfast to the truths that you have born in our spirit. We understand that Jesus Christ is the only one through whom salvation comes. And salvation is a free gift from you, O oh God, because you are gracious to us, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you for your saving grace tonight. We want to pray, Father, tonight, interceding on behalf of those that do not know you uh, in our city, in our uh, province, in our nation and across the nations, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, asking that you will do a new work in this age. Lord, that you will send laborers out into the field to harvest the souls that are ready, oh God. Your word says that the, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that you, who is the Lord of the harvest, you will send laborers out into the field, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will use those of us who are here present on this study, oh God, in any way possible to uh, reach out and, and speak your word and bring truth, uh, 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 bring redemption to people uh, who are desperately seeking you and desperately needing your saving grace, Lord Jesus. Tonight, we bless you. We give you praise. We thank you for pastor and his family, your grace upon his life, oh God. We ask for your grace upon all those uh, that are part of this assembly. Um, be with us the rest of this week until we meet again uh, on Sunday to study uh, your word further and to celebrate you. We bless you and give you praise. Amen. Amen. Good, good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. God, God. bless you. Bye-bye.